All right. So uh, we're yet here again at another installment of Kento Market Insights. I uh, want to welcome everybody who's joining us this afternoon. And uh, if, uh, again, if you're new to Kentico Market Insights, uh, then we certainly appreciate your uh, your time and attention to some of the topics that we're presenting. If you've been, uh, if you've attended in the past, certainly welcome back and we're glad to see you again. Um, the point of Market Insights is effectively it's a webinar series intended to be educational and informational. Uh, the series is intended to deliver, you know, high quality content and information to marketers, digital strategists that really just want to stay on top of the latest trends in, you know, this rapidly changing industry and, you know, to provide this information in a non-salesy way. So hopefully we're, we can steer clear from, you know, this being any type of sales pitch or, or, uh, or solicitation. This is strictly to be educational and informational so that uh, you can kind of keep on tabs with things. Um, with that being said, as we go through, I am going to be recording this session. So I reference that because if uh, you want to reference this presentation, reference the slides at a later time, we will be publishing, it, publishing this out and making those these resources available to you as well. Um, and as we're as you can see, if you've been following the webinar series for a while, you'll know that we run a cadence of every other Wednesday around 2 o'clock Eastern time for these presentations. And Kentico has, I don't know, over a thousand solution partners worldwide, which are really the resources that we leverage to bring you this thought leadership and best practices in digital marketing and online engagements. And these solution partners are, are typically you know, web, interactive, marketing agencies that really cater to all types of industries, verticals and project types. And it's and it's this this webinar sorry is you know is intended to kind of bring you their experience so that you can gain the perspective of best practice knowledge that they've obtained over like hundreds and even thousands of web e commerce online marketing projects through a consistent presentation. As you can see, we've got a, a, a good number of topics coming up on the horizon and uh, if you've uh, attended one of, ours, uh, one of these webinars in the past, you've likely received an email illustrating some of the upcoming topics. But as you can see, uh, in two weeks, we've got HX versus user experience for, uh, for humans, not for users. Uh, sorry, human experience trumps user experience. Uh, digital maturity for associations. Uh, the funnel is dead. Five survival tips for B2B marketers and engaging users while optimizing your digital brand experience. Again, so uh, certainly some interesting topics coming up. This webinar series is also uh, the seed or of, the, of the concept of what we call our 404 Digital Conference. This is the fifth uh, annual user conference that Kentico has been, uh, is hosting. This year it's actually going to be in Las Vegas in early November. For, so just a couple of weeks away, there's still time to get your registration and and tickets if you want to join us at that event. And the concept around this is that you know, everybody likes to brag about achievements and successes, but very seldom does success happen instantly or even on the first try. And, and great successes typically stem from innovations that are you know, the culmination of numerous attempts and even failures. But unfortunately, rarely is the light cast on these building blocks of innovation because no one likes to talk about their mistakes. No one likes to highlight the errors that they made. This conference is going to do just that. So we're going to bring, you know, provide you an experience like no other marketing conference and, and really kind of cast a light on the, the, these building blocks of innovation and help to illustrate some of the trip-falls that other organizations have encountered getting to the level of, of success that they've found and hopefully help you to, to learn from their mistakes along the way as well. Now today's webinar is titled The Marriage of Digital and Traditional Marketing. Are you attending the reception? Our host presenter today is Alex Greger from the Heilman Group and <clears throat> Alex is the senior demand gen technologist at the Heilman Group. And before I hand the presentation over to him, I'll take a couple of quick moments to kind of recognize who they are and kind of what they're all about. But the Heilman Group is one of one of the leading full service digital marketing agencies based in Cleveland, Ohio, which, as a quick aside, is the home to the house 
from A Christmas Story. So, uh, you know, everyone's favorite holiday movie. But uh, Heilman Group simply delivers results from initial inspiration to measurable outcomes, and they help to set and accomplish a client's digital marketing goals. Their, their know-how and their thought leadership isn't simply built upon kind of the latest buzzwords that you hear in the market. They're actively engaging with clients to you know, finesse objectives into inventive and even effective strategies. And, and again, obviously, as they, uh, as they implement those strategies using best right technology, this unique integrated approach, they're able to, uh, to uh, uh, shape the experience uh, in marketing, creativity, and technology. So how does Kentico, or I guess, uh, how, uh, what's Kentico's relationship with Heilman Group? They're currently a gold solution partner. What that means is basically an indication of the level of experience that we recognize they have on specifically the Kentico platform, but with a wide variety of projects uh, and even technologists or certified developers in-house. And a Kentico Gold Partner, as I mentioned, is the highest classification of, co of partnerships that Kentico recognizes and it illustrates an extensive amount of client and customer base experience that they have, well, specifically uh, helping to support the expertise and, and the knowledge that they're going to be presenting today. Now, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and, and provide a, a handoff to, uh, to, uh, to, to Alex, but what I'd like to point out as we're transitioning over to, uh, to Alex is throughout this presentation, if you have any questions, any comments or thoughts that you need to get a little bit more information on, please submit them through the chat dialog window or the questions dialog box. We will be monitoring those views and we'll try to address everyone's questions at the end of the presentation. So with that, welcome to the show, Alex, and uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Eric. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, as Eric said, uh, I'm Alex Greger, uh, Senior Demand Generation Technologist here at Heilman Group. Uh, we're a full-service digital agency um, focusing in the uh, B2B healthcare uh, vertical specifically, but have a wide range of uh, clientele. Um, we work from anything like custom applications and uh, website development all the way through to uh, social media management, branding, design, um, and anything in between. Uh, so today uh, we're talking through uh, kind of uh, the uh, marriage between traditional and digital marketing, uh, how they uh, relate and complement each other, um, and how you could utilize one to benefit the other. Uh, from an agenda perspective, uh, we're going to walk through kind of common concerns that we see with a uh, traditional only approach. Um, why you should look at uh, marrying digital and traditional together, so why they complement each other so well. Uh, a couple of case studies to uh, kind of drive uh, some examples. And then getting into uh, how you could transition if you have a a traditional tactic, how that could uh, be communicated through a digital channel. Uh, the last piece uh, would be then um, uh, how to connect traditional and digital. So how, to, how can one track a traditional marketing initiative? And then finally, uh, some key takeaways. Uh, as Eric said, submit questions throughout. Um, uh, we will ask them uh, towards the end. Um, of the presentation. So uh, the first piece is common concerns with uh, traditional only approach. So when looking at traditional marketing versus digital marketing, um, traditional has, has a tendency to have a, um, an expiration date, if you will. Uh, the lifetime of it only really goes uh, for so long. So uh, you do a uh, direct mail drop and it's a single touch point there or uh, you run a radio or TV spot and um, it runs for only a certain amount of time. Uh, when you uh, look at a 
uh, digital tactic or within the digital medium, uh, you have content that you publish on your website or your blog. Uh, you have social media posts. And behind both of those um, is search engine optimization. Uh, and these uh, channels, these tactics, live on. Uh, they will constantly grow. Uh, they will uh, constantly live on the web, and people could find them uh, through different uh, so that's a, a real benefit to digital versus a, a more traditional uh, channel that uh, may fall off after its runtime. Uh, the next one is uh, reaching your target audience. Um, in today's marketing, uh, with, with the way digital really has and technology has come around, uh, there are tremendous ways to target and get really niche into uh, your audience. So understanding that uh, from a traditional standpoint, you have the ability to usually uh, give a market, uh, maybe a demographic that you'd like to hit, um, uh, maybe a certain region. Uh, but that's really as granular as you can get. Um, in terms of digital, uh, you can get down to specific job titles, specific businesses you want to target. Uh, so it really gives that opportunity to um, to really reach that key audience that you want to touch on. So um, the third one is uh, interrupting your audience versus educating. So uh, we're kind of in a um, a point in marketing where uh, we are we are past the and we'll we'll touch on this later, but we're past the uh, sales driven um, uh, tactics and sales driven budgets. Uh, we are we are past the having to uh, get in front of somebody specifically for them to buy. And now that the um, the that selling process has more turned into a, a buying process, uh, we really need to uh, help the customer or prospect on their journey. It's, it's less of an interruption in getting in front of them with our message and more of how can we help you or educate you along your journey uh, to really understanding how our services or our product can really benefit you um, or uh, how it can help you be more efficient. Uh, timeliness of your message. So a uh, common concern with, with traditional is uh, you need a lot of lead time. So a, a, drop, a drop for direct mail has to be in several weeks before because it needs to be printed, stamped, and get delivered. A TV spot needs all the time for um, prepping and polishing that video or that spot, and then it needs to get to the station several months or weeks ahead of time. Uh, for a digital tactic, we're really looking at uh, more of a, a quick response, uh, sometimes even within hours of something uh, happening or occurring, you can respond uh, in terms of social media, uh, website updates, um, even uh, if it's an uh, email communication, an outbound communication in, in email format, uh, you can really utilize a digital message to respond within hours and not uh, several weeks or months at times. Uh, engagement, so this is uh, uh, number five is back kind of uh, to the interrupting versus uh, educating piece, uh, you want to engage uh, your marketing, um, your your prospects or your customers. You want to utilize your channels and your tactics uh, to interact with them. Uh, traditional marketing tends to be kind of a, a one-way um, speaker phone or um, announcement, where digital marketing is more interactive. It's a conversation. So utilizing social media, uh, custom applications on your website, or interactive, uh, um, interactive content on your website that really allows the user to give they, their say, uh, as well as 
um, be more engaged with your content. Uh, accurate and impactful tracking. Uh, for traditional, it's um, uh, traditional without kind of a supplement or, or complement of digital. It's very difficult uh, to track specific outcomes of a traditional marketing tactic. Uh, when you do a drop mail or a uh, a mail drop, uh, when you do a uh, TV ad. You can have your call center asking people where they heard your message or came from, um, but that's really as, as close as you can get for tracking in terms of traditional, where if you complement that with uh, digital, uh, you really have the ability to very granularly uh, understand what channels drove revenue, uh, how those different um, tactics really uh, what, what the ROI was on those tactics. Uh, the final common concern is, um, is money. Uh, uh, traditional advertising, uh, we all know, can be very costly. And um, as the uh, kind of business grows, uh, your marketing budget may sway one way or the other, um, but uh, your your traditional media uh, is very costly. A billboard, um, a drop piece where you have to pay for all the printing and uh, mailing and processing, uh, the TV spots, the radio spots, those are all very uh, expensive uh, mediums uh, where complementing or utilizing a, a digital tactic allows you to um, be a little more uh, cost efficient. Uh, you're paying specifically on a lot of the tactics on just clicks, uh, not specific uh, views. So uh, many people can see your ad, um, but you don't have to pay for them to see it. Uh, you just pay for the, the actual cost of a click. Um, you can also uh, look at it from a uh, time spent uh, piece where you have a lot more effort and resources uh, to put together a traditional campaign uh, versus a social media post or an email communication. So our next section is going to be jumping into uh, why we should marry digital and traditional marketing. So our first piece is uh, looking at um, brand awareness versus lead generation. So uh, as uh, kind of discussed in the common concerns, uh, we have um, from a, a cost and a time up or, or a time to produce it and, and place it out or go to market with it, uh, digital is definitely has its advantages. However, um, for some digital tactics, it would be really difficult to um, to have a really um, outstanding performance in your, your campaign if nobody really knows uh, who your company is or what your company does. Uh, so if you don't have that kind of uh, brand awareness or, or affinity online, uh, somebody would not always um, be, be tended to click on a, a PPC ad uh, or um, engage with your social media because they may not be following you quite yet or know who you are. So taking the kind of strategy from a uh, traditional um, tactic or channel where we're looking at more brand awareness, um, top of mind and understanding that uh, your company uh, performs these types of services or uh, provides these products, uh, taking those strategies and moving them into a digital uh, channel can really help build that awareness and that affinity and um, really promote and uh, gain a, a lot of engagement with your company. Um, sharing, sharing the wealth, if you will, or uh, kind of spreading um, your tactics so you're not utilizing a single um, a single channel uh, is a, a great um, strategy 
uh, putting all your eggs in one basket is what we call it um, for all one purpose will really uh, only allow your customers to see you on that one channel or that one market. Um, spreading the message across many different channels allows you to have multiple touch points with that prospect or customer, uh, really giving them the opportunity to see your message, uh, see your, uh, your services in many different places, um, keeping you top of mind, and really allowing you to be at the right place at the right time for when they're ready to, to make a purchase decision. Um, going back to kind of the, the budget um, uh, concern, uh, why we want to marry these two is um, in the past uh, year what we've seen is uh, kind of the, the trend of um, marketing budgets going much more uh, towards the digital channels. So you can see those top five there are all uh, digital and all increasing spend throughout 2016. Uh, while our traditional media uh, is seeing a decrease in their spend throughout it, so um, we're not we're not saying cut ties with traditional altogether in any way. Uh, we're saying complement the two, and that seems to be the trend where companies are heading is they're taking their traditional strategy uh, and moving it into digital channels. Um, again, um, a metric from eMarketer.com uh, is showing kind of just the engagement metrics across the different uh, channels. Uh, we can see specifically calling out um, the mobile uh, aspect under digital. Um, in 2011, five years ago, uh, we uh, on average were spending 45 seconds um, per day on uh, that piece of um, that that channel or that medium uh, today and into 2017 uh, we're seeing over three minutes spending so uh, not only are we seeing the transition from businesses spending more money in digital tactics uh, we're seeing the engagement and the uh, response from prospects customers uh, that they're engaging more with the digital content. Um, again, it goes back to that interactive piece where they're really having the ability to communicate and engage and give feedback on those different channels uh, versus uh, a, a more traditional TV or print where it's really a one-way communication. So as we get into kind of the um, tactic transition, what we want to look at is kind of um, what a traditional tactic would be and how it could translate into a digital piece or be complemented uh, with a digital uh, channel. So uh, the first one we wanted to touch on is uh, everyone knows Mad Men. Um, the kind of uh, Mad Men era um, of advertising was really centered around kind of a, a key headline or, or hook uh, on the traditional medium, um, an advertisement on a radio or TV that really catches the eyes and has that aha moment. Um, and with time, we've seen all sorts of technology enhancements, um, analytics enhancements with that technology. And uh, today, we're, we're less of the um, kind of uh, gut feel, if you will, uh, go at a marketing strategy and more data driven. Um, with the technology today, we really have the ability to analyze and understand uh, what the um, progress of our campaign is, how, how it's uh, progressing, um, and optimize it throughout. Uh, so we have that ability to uh, understand it from an analytical uh, mindset and not just have a gut feel uh, on a tactic or a channel. With the um, commercials uh, from TV uh, to um, um, even movie theaters and uh, those types of mediums, 
Uh, we want to look at complementing those with a um, uh, taking that same same idea, that same medium of video, and translating it onto a uh, platform like YouTube. Uh, YouTube is the second largest uh, um, search engine. Uh, it's free to upload your videos to, and it really gives um, your your content and your message the longevity of, of people searching and understanding and and um, viewing that content over time. Uh, taking billboards and that same uh, short, sweet message with um, really kind of bold, creative to catch somebody's eye, uh, taking that same idea and you could really uh, manipulate it uh, into uh, display ads, banner ads that uh, could perform throughout the web. And so uh, these are um, advertisements that you could uh, save costs and save time by having a creative team build your billboard uh, and um, kind of adjust that creative and have the same message, uh, but in a smaller format and display it throughout the web. Uh, banner ads are a great way to kind of uh, spread your message where your relevant audience might be uh, searching um, websites like uh, Times and um, locally here, Cleveland.com, uh, those types of sites that um, are news specific, but also very niche sites uh, that are specific to a, um, a content uh, or a service or product that you're providing. Um, a blogger out there that really um, has a good following but writes more on the um, educational side, your ads could pop up there so it's a, a relevant uh, topic that somebody's reading about and seeing your ad and able to click through so you're staying top of mind with that messaging. Uh, taking kind of the, the traditional magazine ad uh, and communicating it um, how, how we would see that complemented, I guess, in a uh, uh, digital aspect would be uh, social sponsored posts. Uh, so the same idea of being um, targeting a really niche audience. So when you uh, when you place a magazine ad, you're usually targeting a specific age range and a specific uh, genre and audience that. Um, I want engulf digest because I'm targeting uh, men that are retired age and avid golfers, uh, something to that degree where uh, you really have a very um, targeted audience. And sponsored posts are in that same mindset where uh, you can get uh, very granular with your targeting and understand kind of a specific um, persona that you want to uh, reach and message to. Um, back to the, so yellow pages uh, tran translating into uh, a search ad. Um, I wanted to touch on this um, back to the point of not, we're not saying traditional is dead in any way. Um, we uh, looked at and found some research that um, 80 million users still visit yellowpages.com a year, and 20 million businesses are still listed on it. Uh, so um, it is a very relevant, though that's yellowpages.com, uh, the, the Yellow Pages um, itself is still a very relevant tactic, um, and how it can be translated into um, a digital tactic outside of um, yellowpages.com is uh, search ads, PPC ads. Uh, so this is very short, uh, keyword-driven um, uh, um, messaging where somebody is looking for a specific answer and uh, your ad is appearing to answer that uh, query. And so um, very similar to Yellow Pages where uh, uh, you have a broken pipe, you go to your Yellow Pages to look for a plumber, uh, that local plumber uh, then comes and helps you. That same mentality is utilized in uh, search engines. 
uh, newspaper inserts, uh, we see a complement to this or a very similar tactic of uh, email. So in a, in a newspaper insert, you're always looking at um, uh, kind of the Sunday newspaper where you have all the uh, discounts and advertising of products coming through. Um, you can utilize email to really expand that message, take it uh, beyond just the um, people that subscribe to the newspaper, but now you have subscribers that sign up through your website or other um, uh, mediums, and um, you message them with uh, everything from discounts and promotions to educational content that really helps uh, them understand the differentiation points in your business, uh, as well as um, how to utilize uh, products and services that you provide. Uh, flyers uh, to SMS messaging. So flyers are always found very local. Um, they're either handed out to people uh, passing by in a very um, geographic specific location. Uh, SMS can uh, be utilized in the same manner and really expand that uh, beyond just the people uh, willing to accept your flyer on the street but or within your business, but this can be taken now to the point of when somebody enters this specific uh, geolocation, um, I'm going to send them a, a um, SMS message with a promotion uh, so they can come into the door and really get uh, kind of um, getting foot traffic into your location if you have a brick and mortar store. Uh, traditional uh, events, trade shows, uh, conferences uh, can really translate well to webinars and we actually see this here uh, with the kind of um, 404 conference coming up uh, and the uh, Kentico kind of educational webinars. Um, they're to kind of expand your message uh, and really understand um, a live person event uh, can sometimes be uh, not the right timing for somebody. They have, uh, it's a busy time of year for their business or they have a personal event happening that they can't make that in-person event. Uh, a webinar really takes that, um, that kind of uh, physicality aspect out of it and allows somebody uh, to either view a recording uh, of a webinar, um, view or um, watch the webinar from uh, really anywhere uh, that they would like, uh, as well as cost efficiency. They don't have to travel. They don't have to uh, uh, kind of spend the, the time uh, to get someplace. So a webinar really allows you to uh, attend and engage with a uh, an event or a company uh, without spending uh, the amount of um, time and effort to get to a physical location. Uh, so it's a, a really nice complement to a uh, trade show or conference. So um, walking through some examples uh, that we have, uh, the first one uh, we wanted to kind of point out is um, pulling a pro sports sponsorship. Uh, so uh, we had um, a client that um, wanted to uh, readjust their budget because they weren't really seeing uh, true ROI from a sponsorship of a, um, of a, a sports team. So uh, they were looking at their kind of um, their, their current costs and uh, really focusing on a high quality service to their customers and um, when looking at kind of the operations and uh, operation costs and kind of the relationship there versus uh, kind of the, the ROI they were getting from the, the sponsorship, uh, they uh, decided to um, kind of uh, take that uh, budget and reallocate it to uh, kind of smaller individual programs that were more um, 
data driven and uh, a little easier to analyze and measure um, so we could really understand what the return was, uh, how people were really driving from that tactic into their business and what um, kind of revenue was really coming out of uh, those programs. Uh, the next one is a, a live event um, and a, um, a company wanted to understand uh, what kind of engagement was happening uh, with their brand around the live event that they were hosting. Um, and they really uh, didn't understand how they could really um, really get the, the analytics or understand kind of the conversations that were happening within this event. Uh, so um, what, we, what we looked at doing is all um, event communications leading up to it uh, had uh, call to actions to really share information and follow along a social hashtag. And that social hashtag allowed people to um, share what they were learning, uh, engage with other um, event attendees, uh, and really um, kind of have a more, uh, have a different way of engaging um, with the company at that event. It also allowed uh, for that company to um, kind of have a historical record of engagement so they could reuse that content um, in other future marketing communications um, as well as track the engagement and really understand what people were talking about, uh, what keynotes and breakouts were really popular and uh, understand it without kind of the uh, personal survey um, that uh, uh, sometimes comes with an event. Um, the third one we want to walk through is uh, kind of taking the multi-channel approach that we've been discussing throughout the presentation. Uh, so um, the idea was to, or the goal was to increase patient acquisition with a healthcare system uh, through, um, a, as well as understand attribution with different channels utilized uh, to, to communicate a message. Um, the current situation of the uh, client was using many kind of traditional or offline tactics uh, that uh, did a great job of uh, kind of driving brand and patient acquisition, um, but the trouble was there was no way to really attribute which source was bringing in which patients, and it was really focused on kind of more the traditional media, radio, TV spots some print ads. Uh, so uh, what we put together uh, is um, a, a series of educational uh, pieces of content that lived on, on the web and was gated behind forms and all traditional and digital medium media was dr driven to those uh, gated assets. Uh, and as people were downloading the content and really becoming engaged, uh, they would then receive uh, a series of uh, kind of nurture emails uh, that they would continue to be educated on uh, the products and services the healthcare system provided. And what the uh, form allowed us to do is understand where these different um, uh, prospects were coming from. So uh, from a technical aspect on the back end of the form, uh, we were um, tracking hidden fields that uh, capture kind of uh, visitor um, uh, information based on where they came from. So referral information uh, to understand what channel was driving them uh, to that form. Uh, with this, uh, it really gave um, a kind of full multi-channel uh, approach um, to their marketing, allowed their message to be seen in many different mediums um, and stay top of mind of their um, prospects. It also allowed us to understand um, what channels really are driving the most revenue and really readjusting or optimizing budgets 
um, after understanding that, uh, to really invest in those channels or those tactics that are uh, driving the um, the most revenue. Uh, the final example we have is um, a holiday promotion, um, and uh, what we utilized here was um, a a traditional tactic to uh, drive people into a local store, a local community store, and anything purchased off of a specific list uh, would benefit a local charity. Uh, money would be contributed to that charity. Uh, there were traditional uh, spots driving um, people, foot traffic into this location, um, but it wasn't effectively driving that, that traffic. We weren't getting uh, the best engagement out of it. Uh, so um, taking kind of a, a traditional complement uh, with uh, complementing with digital approach, uh, we put that um, list of uh, different products that you could purchase, uh, we put them on a landing page and we drove a specific call to action in all those kind of traditional medias um, driving with a vanity URL, um, meaning it's a URL that will then redirect your uh, uh, URL that we specifically um, know is coming from a specific tactic so we understand uh, kind of what traffic, uh, what source is driving the traffic. Um, with this kind of specific call to action added, and then some uh, additional social media engagement that um, occurred, we really were able to increase the foot traffic into the store and really help that, um, that location drive that charitable act. So our, our final section is um, how to connect traditional and digital. Uh, so uh, what we want to look at is um, now we understand kind of the the common um, common pitfalls, if you will, of a traditional only um, aspect. Uh, we also looked at kind of some examples of uh, um, key uh, engagements where we complemented digital and traditional. We also looked at how. Uh, traditional media can be translated into a digital tactic. So now we're going to look at how we could take um, traditional and connect it with digital. Uh, the first piece is through um, uh, analytics, or actually the main piece is through uh, tracking and analytics. It's one of the key um, um, pieces of digital marketing is the data behind it and the analysis that you can do with that uh, digital marketing, um, all the traffic and, and metrics that you are collecting behind the scenes when somebody is visiting your website, engaging with your content, whether it's on social or through email communications. So uh, the first piece is utilizing a vanity URL. So anytime a traditional piece goes out, uh, whether it's a um, postcard, a uh, TV spot, a radio spot, a billboard, uh, you should utilize a vanity URL. It just uh, gives a clean, simple uh, URL that um, can be utilized as your call to action. And when somebody goes to it, uh, it specifically tells you on the back end uh, that they're driving from a specific source. So you can use a redirect where it uh, takes the vanity URL and then redirects it to the final destination and applies some uh, Google Analytics or uh, whatever uh, web trafficking platform you utilize, uh, add some of that um, kind of traffic uh, to the end of the URL. Uh, you could also use a different vanity, vanity URL per tactic and have it drive specifically to that page. Uh, and then you, you understand that that specific URL is from TV spots, or uh, a different URL is specifically from radio spots. And then that will allow you to attribute any traffic and uh, prospects that come from it uh, back to that specific source. 
Another uh, key um, implementation to connect traditional and digital uh, is call tracking. So uh, there are many different platforms out there. Um, we utilize uh, a platform internally that complements with paid search where uh, a paid search ad can be displayed uh, with a specific phone number and when that phone number is, is called out we know specific keyword campaign um, that was driving it. So uh, it really allows us to uh, understand from a traditional phone call aspect uh, what drove that phone call initially. Um, the final kind of analytic aspect um, is the uh, measuring social media uh, engagement and events. So uh, we touched on this a little bit with the one case study that we uh, walked through, but understanding uh, key engagements at an event through hashtags, uh, through um, social sharing and engagement uh, really allows you to take uh, kind of your offline um, booth that people come and visit maybe or um, leave behind that you promote uh, and allow you to take that next step uh, to track the engagement that it has. Another uh, kind of um, connection between traditional and digital um, tactics is uh, re-engagement. Uh, so um, building a remarketing campaign uh, to build awareness um, around prospects that are driving from traditional media to specific uh, web pages. So uh, you have a um, TV spot that drives to a specific um, web page. On that web page, you put some remarketing code, and you're picking up anyone that visits that. Uh, and then they will see your message as kind of they visit other websites throughout the web. Uh, and this really allows you to uh, kind of take the uh, top of mind and multi-channel approach where uh, your message is showing up in relevant places throughout the web uh, so uh, your prospects can um, kind of uh, subconsciously sometimes even uh, see your message and see your branding. The, um, the personalization aspect of traditional media um, has always kind of been a hard uh, piece to get to. You can always add first name personalization uh, when sending a direct mail piece, but that's about as personalized as you can get. Um, when connecting it with digital, uh, it really allows you to uh, create dynamic ads and dynamic content that is very relevant and very personalized to the prospect coming to it. Uh, anywhere from um, emails that specifically reference uh, their company and what interest they've had uh, through to content on your website that uh, is changed out based on a persona that that prospect may match. Um, and then taking kind of the uh, traditional uh, and digital strategy and really um, having one goal, one message across all those channels. So really understanding how to integrate the two uh, to really have a multi-channel approach is kind of your best, uh, best fit scenario. Um, giving the opportunity um, for a prospect to see your message on many different mediums uh, and really uh, be at the right place at the right time uh, for when that prospect is, is ready to convert. So um, we wanted to point out uh, uh, some key takeaways uh, that we um, kind of pointed out throughout the presentation, but uh, wanted to uh, make sure uh, that um, that we kind of touch on, on these key points. Uh, the first one is uh, before choosing a tactic, um, make sure we understand what our goals are, um, how we're going to track those goals, um, and how we're going to get to those goals. So uh, once you understand where you want to go 
or what the um, kind of uh, key metric is that you want to get to, uh, then determining what tactic would be best to uh, get to that goal. So um, is your uh, goal kind of just branding and messaging top of mind? Uh, you might go with a um, remarketing and uh, TV spot where it's, it's kind of very general. Uh, you're keeping yourself top of mind with your prospects, but you're not hitting uh, kind of um, key targeted audiences or giving uh, key, um, uh, key interactions. Uh, you, you might have a specific goal of increasing leads by a certain percentage for um, a certain year uh, or time period. Uh, with that type of goal, a more branded, blanketed approach um, is not going to be very effective. So uh, you want to go more um, buying and um, uh, more buying specific or conversion specific. So uh, social media posts that really drive to a um, a key asset or gated asset, uh, paid search ads that are very cost efficient. Um, allowing you to really um, utilize your budget fully. The second one is, uh, as we've spoken to throughout the presentation, traditional is not dead. Uh, we're, we want to complement it. Um, it has its purposes. Um, utilizing it for key messaging um, for certain goals, it's still a very key tactic um, as far as radio, TV spots, um, mail drops, anything to that order. Uh, the third takeaway is um, traditional is a great strategy for um, branding and blanketing, um, but digital tactics allow you um, quicker turnaround. Uh, so if you have um, a PR incident where you need to get a message out, uh, digital can be a quick response type of uh, tactic. Um, it is also um, digital can be very effective uh, when it comes to key targets. So if you're if you want to target key personas um, or have a uh, specific company that you're looking at, you're trying to kind of uh, take an ABM strategy uh, where you have specific key accounts that you want to target. Digital is much more focused and able to. Um, target that audience uh, versus a traditional tactic. It also has uh, the ability uh, to be uh, very cost efficient, um, understanding that you're paying a lot of times by acquisition or by click uh, versus um, just by general reach uh, is a differentiation point that is key to look at. Uh, the last one is um, uh, plan ahead uh, with your traditional campaigns uh, so you understand how to track them. Going back to kind of the vanity URL uh, aspect, um, uh, understanding where you're driving somebody or that call to action that you're placing on that traditional media and making sure that um, behind the scenes you're able to attribute back anyone that gets to that location or that destination, you can attribute them back to that uh, traditional um, uh, tactic, that, that TV spot or that radio spot, uh, so you can fully uh, kind of report and measure the ROI on those campaigns. So um, Eric, uh, that's our presentation. Um, do you have, did we have any questions uh, throughout? Yeah, no, that was great. That was great. I'm. Uh, I appreciate uh, what you what you had to say here. Um, we actually do have a question, uh, or actually a handful of questions. Um, the first one, actually, going to uh, a it looks like a news article that uh, someone is referencing recently. Uh, P and G announced that they'll be moving away from ads on Facebook that target specific consumers, basically concluding that the practice has limited effectiveness. What do you think went wrong that made the company rethink their online advertising strategy? Um, I, I mean, I would really have to understand what the goal of the campaign was and uh, kind of uh, 
what they were striving to do. Um, we have utilized um, Facebook uh, for many different campaigns. We've seen great results in certain campaigns and others that we have seen it um, not work as well. Uh, so I think it really depends on uh, what the goal was or what they were trying to really get out of the campaign and what their messaging and targeting was. Um, we can definitely uh, kind of look into that article specifically. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head, I guess. So I can kind of circle back and we can put out a, a blog post or something in response to it. But um, uh, to kind of analyze kind of maybe what went wrong, but uh, from a kind of 3,000 foot view, it'd be hard to understand what went wrong without knowing what the strategy, targeting, and kind of key messaging was on the campaign. Okay, good. And that, and that makes sense. Um, okay, I've got, uh, I've got another question here. What would you say is the best marketing mix for a first-time self-published author to sell his or her book online? Um, I mean, uh, con what we always say here at Heilman is uh, content is king. Uh, so we always focus on uh, that aspect initially, uh, building a website, um, blog communication around that uh, um, uh, book and what it communicates, uh, how it can help somebody, whether it's a self-help business type book or whether it's a uh, more of a, um, a uh, story type book. Um, but content is usually what we focus on first and then you want to drive people to that content uh, through it could be, I guess, a variety of tactics. Uh, we tend to lean towards um, uh, social, uh, Facebook specifically, because we've seen it be really cost efficient, uh, but also um, paid search ads, because uh, Google, I mean, is the uh, leading, everyone goes to Google, uh, they're the leading search engine, so uh, putting out specific campaigns that drive to uh, um, that content that you're providing and giving uh, would be a great start. Um, their uh, PPC ads and uh, Facebook or social advertising is a very cost efficient uh, way to market that content. But first you want to have that website or the, the blog content uh, to really drive somebody to that destination. Okay. All right. Um, actually, I've got a couple other questions. It looks like, uh, let me see what time we're at. Uh, I want to be conscientious of everybody's time. Uh, so we'll see if we can do one, maybe two more questions. Um, how granular is the targeting for social advertising compared to, to the traditional mediums from your experience? Definitely. Uh, with social advertising, um, there's a wide variety of um, demographic type of targeting that you can do, uh, whether it's um, somebody's social interest, like on their profile page, somebody's interested in cooking, or somebody is interested in robotics, if you're a uh, service in robotics. You can get down to even what they um, are interested in, but uh, their specific demographic data, like job title, uh, age range, um, gender, location, uh, uh, so you can get very niche and very granular with your social posting. That's one of the reasons we uh, really tend to utilize it uh, for clients is um, we can uh, make sure that we are getting in front of uh, key decision makers and uh, kind of not blanketing a large audience that may not be as relevant where traditional like um, TV spots or uh, radio spots, you can really only determine uh, your location and timing and 
uh, you can get a little niche in terms of what type of programming you want to um, be uh, shown on or um, have your ad run on, but that's about as, as granular as you can get. Okay. Let's see if there's any follow-ups on that uh, on that question, but that uh, no, makes sense to me. Um, and I guess the last question: uh, what uh, what do you guys typically use? You know, what what do you get, what does Heilman usually recommend or use as the main platforms for tracking website visits, conversions, phone calls? Definitely. Um, so I guess from from individual kind of um, tactic standpoints, we uh, utilize Google Analytics for uh, tracking web. Uh, we also um, utilize Kentico because Kentico has uh, tracking capabilities within its CMS platform. Uh, we uh, utilize um, a from a um, UX standpoint, like how people interact with the website, uh, we use uh, platforms called Hotjar or Crazy Egg. It uh, really allows you like um, mouse tracking, uh, heat maps, understand really uh, how people are utilizing your site. Um, from a call tracking and uh, paid uh, kind of paid management aspect, we ut we utilize a platform called WordStream. Uh, it really allows us to um, manage our campaigns at scale as well as uh, understand kind of um, or integrate uh, call tracking as well as uh, other key um, metrics from website conversions into it. And then um, um, from a kind of database standpoint, um, most of our uh, records fall into a platform called Marketo where we uh, kind of uh, have an ongoing relationship with that prospect through nurturing and really are able to uh, integrate that platform with our, our Kentico platforms very easily um, and um, allow them to kind of communicate back and forth very efficiently. Was there any that I missed there? No, that sounds good. Uh, all right, I, I, all right. I there's probably like five other questions. Uh, so uh, evidently, uh, you, you hit a, hit a chord with a, a lot of people on the call. But uh, we've uh, we've come to the time that we uh, we have available for for our meet for our webinar. But uh, what I would recommend, and as I mentioned earlier, we will we did record this session. We will be publishing it out online, so you can uh, review the information uh, or access the, uh, the presentation and the recording later. Uh, we'll also try to provide some Q&A uh, responses to the questions that we weren't able to address during the live event. But uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at a future Market Insights uh, webinar, and uh, hopefully as well as the, at our uh, live event in, uh, in Vegas, in Nevada. But Alex, thank you and Heilman. I really appreciate the time and, uh, and certainly the information and insights. Thank you, Eric. All right, guys. Have a great day, guys. Thank you. Bye.